Yep. I'm going to talk about women's flat track roller derby. It's a sport just like any other sport. We train hard, we hurt, we work out five times a week usually, sometimes six. We do plyometrics, we do muscle training, we work on our cardio, we work on roller skating obviously because we need to be able to roller skate to play the sport. Um, I think the media uh, struggles to define what roller derby is. I've heard loads and loads of different um, descriptions. They're trying to sort of fit us into a category. How can we explain what this sport is? Not a lot of people know about it. Um, I've heard it described as rugby on wheels, um, British bulldog on wheels. Uh, the latest I heard was it's like playing speed chess while somebody throws bricks at you, <laughs> um, which is probably about the closest, I think. Um, but yeah, it's hard going, it's the sport. And we train hard to do it. Um, but I don't want to talk about the sport and I don't want to um, tell you how it works. I don't want to tell you the rules about it. What I want to tell you about is um, what I think is the unique aspect of roller derby, which is the community that surrounds it, which is, um, it's just a little bit unique, I think, in the sporting world. Um, and <laughs> this is kind of part of it. So. When roller derby started out, <clears throat> there was a set of kind of moral codes, principles, um, started in America. A team of women put together the first roller derby team, um, brought it back to life. It, it's a really old game. They decided to bring it back, make it a sport, make it a bit fun. Um, and there was a set of guiding principles that they used. Um, it came over the pond, it came to the UK in about 2006. It started off in London. Um, and it really had these words that were related to it, so DIY, punk, alternative, um, you know, people talked about it being grassroots, feminist, all of these words relating to roller derby, which is essentially a sport. Um, it was all female when it came over to the UK, there were no males playing roller derby, males were only involved um, in an official capacity, so there were male refs, there were male uh, helpers in leagues. Um, <laughs> DIY aspect of roller derby. At the beginning in my league, we struggled with, um, for example, marketing. <laughs> I don't think we always got it right at the beginning. Uh, there was nobody in my league that knew how to work Photoshop. We really made some terrible posters to advertise our games. Um, and when I look back at the, uh, the material that we used to try and draw people in to play the sport, um, a whip is a, is a roller derby move. Um, I don't know how anybody came to play Roller Derby from seeing that poster and it's funny looking back at it. Um, our logos, these are the logos that we were considering when we first started out. We, we actually went with the fist logo with the flying teeth, uh, which also doesn't really represent the Roller Derby because there are rules in Roller Derby and you can't punch anybody in the face. Um, I'm really glad we didn't go with this beautiful lady on the left. Um, because that is just not representative of Roller Derby. Um, what I want to talk about is how Roller Derby grew, um, and I think this is a fantastic story, and I think it's really interesting to look at the roots of it, and it just shot up and exploded so fast across the UK and Europe. Uh, it was really women sharing information. So, you know, somebody set up a league in Glasgow, somebody set up a league in London, Birmingham, Aberdeen, and these women set up these leagues and then they wanted to share what they'd set up because, you know, they wanted people to play against, they wanted people to be competitive so that they had good teams to play. And they came and visited leagues that wanted to set up around the country. So um, this picture just shows in 2008 the back room of a pub in Edinburgh, which is where my team was formed. Uh, 40 women answered a poster advertising a roller derby league to start out. Angie came from Glasgow with a little suitcase to show us what the equipment was. She was saying, these are the roller skates, these are the pads that you wear on your knees, this is how you play the game. We had no idea what we were forming, we just knew that it sounded really exciting and we wanted to form a roller derby league. Um, so I think it's just the nature of the way that the information that was shared from league to league, which is the most fascinating part of roller derby for me. I love playing the sport. It actually, it just, it's so exhilarating. I love it, I love it. I can't um, talk about it enough, <laughs> usually in work as well as outside of work. Um, but it's this surrounding DIY culture um, 
The Women's Slap Trap Derby Association uh, is the, they're the holders of the rules. They're an American-based. They started off in America, now they've expand, expanded. So they cover international roller derby. They're the ones that make the rules. But um, organization is uh, purely made up of skaters, so it's run by skaters for skaters. Um, and this kind of ethos was all about keeping the decision-making rights of the sport within the people that play the sport, so nobody owns roller derby leagues. Um, across Europe, this message was just shared over and over again from city to city. And as Rona Derby League set up, um, everybody's got the same values and the same principles and the same sort of code of conduct um, within their leagues. Um, we have words in our constitution like inclusive, safe space and supportive. So it's not just about being a sport, it's about being a community for people. Um, and actually building that community, I think that made people come and want to be a part of it. Um, I think that's why it expanded so fast um, and why people stayed because, you know, you invest your time into something, you invest a bit of love and a bit of passion into something, um, even if you're not the best roller derby skater in the league, um, you can find a role, you can find a job um, and you invest yourself. It becomes a family. We all talk about our leagues like they're our families and we spend a hell of a lot of time with them and we do a hell of a lot of work. So what happened is, as these leagues began to grow, um, so Edinburgh, for example, we probably started out with about 30 people. Um, now we've got um, over 100 people involved with our league. Um, and having more people means that you've got more people with skills to be able to market your league and make nice posters and logos. Um, so a lot of leagues decided to start changing their logos. We look a lot better now. <laughs> so outwardly, um, we look a lot better. We look a lot more attractive. Um, another thing that happened is, for instance, photographers that were coming along to our games uh, were just amateur photographers that wanted to learn a bit more about sports photography. And as they followed us up through uh, the, the sort of history of roller derby, they're getting amazing at taking these really good sporty shots which means, again, outwardly, we're looking a bit better, <laughs> a bit less DIY, but underneath, we are still completely DIY, we're still completely run by skaters. We all give up a lot of our time um, to make our leagues run. Um, I'm just gonna let you look at this for a second. This is, um, my league got invited to Berlin uh, at the end of last year. Um, we got invited to play in the first ever European tournament, which was sanctioned by the Women's Flat Track Roller Derby Association. Um, it was meant to be the top 10 teams in Europe playing each other. We were so excited about this, we trained so hard for it. Um, and then when it came to our team meeting, we had to, um, we were talking about what we wanted to put in the programme. There was a glossy brochure being produced, there was hundreds of people watching this tournament in Berlin. It was a massive arena. Um, it was being streamed live across the internet. Um, and one of the girls had just found a My Little Pony uh, generator on, la on the internet and she thought it was the most amazing thing because you can make a little pony in your own image and, <laughs> and give it a little personality. And uh, just as a joke in the team meeting, I said, why don't we just send our pony headshots in? So this is the thing that I love about roller derby. It doesn't, it's not just become a sport. It's not become, you know, what you expect of a sport. Um, I love the fact that it's almost like there's a little bit of rebelliousness underneath, still there, you know, we, we, look, we look quite professional from the outside, we've all got really good logos, we've all got athletic tops now, so we look, we don't look like a DIY alternative punk kind of sport, but we do really stupid things and we enjoy it, and we enjoy the fact that we can make the decision to send pony headshots in to a massive big tournament if we want. Um, <laughs> I, I want to talk about uh, the way that things look in Europe, so... Um, I went to Berlin in 2009, um, just a few months after I started playing roller derby, and it was, um, for me it was amazing because there was probably about, um, I'd say seven teams in the UK in about 2008. I went over to Berlin for the very first European organisational conference. Berlin had decided that they wanted to get as many people from Europe together to talk about just how we work not how to play the sport necessarily, but how we structure ourselves 
we have a committee structure, we have like all this voting and polling that goes on in the league so that everybody gets a chance to make decisions. Um, and it was amazing. We sat in a sports hall for three days around benches. There was about 30 of us. We represented 11 countries across Europe. Um, and we learned things like how to do plyometrics for the first time ever. And I remember this is the first time I'd ever done proper, proper exercise <laughs> because when we got back to Edinburgh I could not get off the plane and everybody was slowly coming behind me while I was trying to ease my legs down. Um, so it was an amazing conference. Um, if we fast forward a little bit uh, to 2012-ish, um, this only represents the, the amount of roller derby leagues that are actually registering on this website that collects data about European derby. So this is probably under-representing what's out there. Um, but there are generally kind of over 60 leagues in the UK, um, closer to, we're getting over 300 in Europe. It's just growing. It's just, if you think that seven years ago, roller derby didn't exist in the UK or in Europe, and that seven years later, it's massive. Uh, and then when I went to the European conference this time around, uh, I was absolutely blown away because there was 350 people there. Um, represented 75 leagues across Europe. We had the, the Berlin team that hosted us had to hire conference rooms to make sure that we were all housed. There was sessions, um, not just talking about how we organised our own leagues, but the sessions were really concentrating on some big issues um, that were really exciting, such as where are we going with the sport? Um, there was countries represented that were looking at building an organisation that sits over, which is quite weird for it's quite weird for Olada because we've been particularly unstructured. But now leagues are starting to come together. They're settled within themselves, they know what they're doing, um, and now it's, there seems to be like a push to make it a bit more organised. So we're talking about country um, umbrella bodies with representatives from each Olada league in the UK, for example. We've got the UK Roller Derby Association in France. They've just set one up, um, and I can't remember what the full wording of it is, but their acronym is FROG, which I love. It's another little <laughs> kind of quirky roller derby thing. Um, I love the fact that this time around, there was hundreds of people. It was a proper conference in a hotel, but we still sat in a sports hall and had a DIY breakfast every day and a DIY lunch every day. Um, so there were some big questions this year at the conference and they were covering things like men's roller derby which is particularly interesting because this has been an absolutely female dominated sport which is quite unusual in the sporting world. For the last six years I'd say um, men's roller derby has just started appearing um, some people refer to it as dangle derby, I only heard that last <laughs> week. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> there's not that many men's leagues and they don't seem to be uh, growing as fast as women's leagues and I saw I saw a film a couple of weeks ago that um, a male roller derby skater had brought out and it seemed to be the underlying theme seemed to be the difficulty uh, about being a male in a female dominated <laughs> world <laughs> which is quite interesting um, and yeah so we've got things coming up in future that that kind of worry me a little bit I'm not sure what the future looks like because we are growing so fast and it feels like we've had this real community feel, this real DIY feel, and all of a sudden it's exploded. Um, we've got men's derby, we've got co-ed derby coming onto the scene, which is just mixed teams, junior roller derby, um, and we've got a lot of competing leagues just appearing in small geographical areas, and we've got a limited resource in sports halls and venues to show bouts, um, and, a, and a limited audience resource as well from city to city. So it's going to be challenging, but, um, but I, I love it and I can't wait to see what happens next in the story of Roller Derby because it's just so unusual um, and it's just exploded and I've never been involved with anything so unique um, in my life. Uh, so I've got some worries about the future, but I'm actually quite confident that you know something that's got so much positivity connected to it and so much love and so much um, passion, you know, it's got to go down the right road. I don't think we'll get sidelined and go anywhere bad, hopefully. Um, and that's me. I'm <laughs> that was just to demonstrate that sometimes we do bad things on track <laughs> to our teammates. I apologise, bangers. <laughs> and that's me. That's all I wanted to say today.